In today's video, you are going to see how to integrate your Lambda functions to an API gateway. Why do we want to do that? If you want to expose your Lambda functions or your APIs to third parties or the external world, then it would be ideal to have an API gateway in front of your Lambda functions so that you can leverage the security and throttling mechanisms and other functionality that API gateway provides you. So if you remember, Lambda is an event driver driven architecture. So in this case, you are going to accept an HTTP method from your partners so that you can process the query and send them back the response. So I have written a simple Lambda function called as search wiki. Let us say we are going to search the Wikipedia for certain queries and then we are going to present them the results and we are going to accept and get method for that. So let us go ahead and go to our Visual Studio code and then see how we can go ahead and write this for us. Here I have the basic Lambda function, which just does the response for my queries. Say for example, I have a function which is called as search and it is already deployed. And if you want to test it, all we have to do is SLS invoke iPhone F for function and then put in search. It is going to give me a welcome message that you see there saying welcome to API gateways. So if we want to show expose it to the external world, then we need an HTTP endpoint and that is what we are going to do now. So let us go over to the serverless.yaml file and under our sections where it says handler, we are going to add a method called as events because Lambda requires an event trigger and we are going to add an event here and then we are going to add a HTTP method. So let us go ahead and do that and then I want my results for the query to be available in a separate path for my URL. So I'm just going to put in the path as results and then I'm going to accept a method for get. So you can go ahead and put in post or you can put in other HTTP methods that are supported or that you like to support in your Lambda functions. So that we have done that on the server.yaml file. Let us go ahead and add the code that is necessary to accept the get method. So we have the default command line here. I'm just going to copy this. And then I'm just going to say if event HTTP method equal to get then say I'm just going to say Welcome to HTTP methods. I'm just going to save this code. Save both the files and then I'm just going to deploy the function again. So let us go ahead and say SLS deploy. And it's just going to take that's the usual process of zipping it up, uploading it into a cloud formation template and deploying it for us. There you go, you can see here serverless has finished deploying the code and we have got an URL here. And I'm just going to copy this URL so that we can put it in our browser and see we are getting the response saying welcome to HTTP methods. We can also use a tool like Postman for you to make get and post requests. For now, let us start with the browser. Then when we are moving on to post methods, then we can start using the Postman tool for making that. Let us go to my browser now. So I'm going to paste it, paste the URL here. Okay, I got to still the code. Let me go ahead and copy the URL again. I'm going to paste the URL here and then make the query. And once everything is successful, I should be getting a JSON response from my server. So as the JSON is not clearly formatted here, I'm just going to use a Chrome plugin, which allows me to go ahead and look the JSON in a proper way. So here I have I use a plugin so that my HTTP response is formatted and you can see here I can get the message as welcome to HTTP methods and also the event that is being sent to my Lambda function and we clearly see here the path that we set up for our function as slash results and we also get the HTTP method as get 
and along with that we get a lot of information on the header side for example what is the user agent that made this query uh, what was the port that was used and what was the ip address that was used and we also see that whether any query strings has been passed on to my function or a path parameter has been set for example if i have a query string in my function that will be having the, having the value here and i can process it and do some activity in my function and show it to on my screen so that is what we are going to see in the next video how to take an input from the user and process it in my function and present the output to my user keep watching thanks for watching thanks for watching happy learning